All right, Matthew. So let's jump in here and learn all about probability. And I don't know about you, but when I think of probability, this scene comes to mind. What do you think the chances are of a guy like you and a girl like me ending up together? What are my chances? Not good. You mean not good like one out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. Right. Basically, we want to know, you know, what's a chance? What's a percentage? What's the likelihood that this thing will happen? All right. So uh, let's look at example one and we're going to take a look at lots of different examples today uh, to help you wrap your mind around probability and all our different techniques because there are plenty of techniques and we're going to help you walk through each one of these. All right. So assume that we have a fair die, right? Our classic example, and you're going to roll that die right and all the possible outcomes that makes up our sample space so this is our sample space right here i could get a one two three four five or six and we know if this is a fair die all those outcomes are equally likely so for this question we want to find the uh, probability the chance that when you roll that die right the likelihood right what is that likelihood that it's going to be a multiple of four so the first thing you're going to be doing when we're looking at probability, right? When we're looking at this fraction here is the number on top, our numerator is going to represent, you know, all the ways that you could land, uh, that you could get whatever it is that you're looking for. In this case, a multiple of four. So what are multiples of four? Well, four, eight, 12, and we go on and on. But in this case, only the four is in our sample space. So there's only one way that we could get this multiple of four. And out of how many possibilities do we have here? Well, we have six. So there is our answer. This is the probability. And when you round these, uh, we'll get into rounding. We usually want to uh, round to four decimal places. We'll talk about that. But again, make sure you're reading your textbook um, because they might want something else. All right. Um, so this is just the beginning. So again, when you're finding the probability, this number on top represents how many ways that thing that you're looking at, how many ways can that happen? And up, uh, downstairs in our denominator, this is out of the total possible ways, right? So there's our first example. Let's follow me to example two. All right, so for this example, uh, again, we're gonna roll that fair die and when you roll the fair die, it's always helpful, if possible, to write out that sample space, all the possibilities. That's really going to help you out as we move through these examples, okay? And of course, all these possibilities are equally likely. But now, we're interested in the probability that when you roll that die, it's going to land on something greater than one. So remember, we're talking about greater than one. So we're not including one. And these words such as greater than, less than, uh, at least, at most, um, I want you to pay attention to those words and make sure you really understand what it is that they mean uh, because that's going to play clutch when you're answering these questions. All right, so greater than one, that means we're looking at two, three, four, five, and six. So how many numbers do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So there's five ways that could happen. So our fraction is going to be five out of the total, which is six, right? And right now we're just writing our answers as fractions. But again, pay attention if they want you to actually write it as a decimal, okay? Um, I mentioned at most, so let's go ahead and let's talk about that. What if they said, find the probability uh, that you roll a die and it lands on at most five, right? So remember, that's your ceiling. When it says at most five, we include five. So this is another way of saying five and below. So whenever they say at most, you're looking at that number and everything else below that. So in this case, you're looking at one, two, three, four, and five. So this probability would also be five over six. So that's something to add to those notes. 
just like if we were looking at find the probability of the most famous one at least you're gonna see that come up over and over again so let's say at least three pretend I asked you to give me at least three dollars right that means you're gonna give me you can give me three dollars but hopefully you're gonna give me more because dr. math is hooking it up so you got to hook it up with some likes some subscribes right and so at least three dollars so that means you give me three dollars you can give me four dollars right so the least is three and so it's gonna be three and above so let's write that down three and above when you're thinking of that word at least and so in this case the highest we could go is six so we're looking at three four five and six and there are four of those numbers right out of the six and of course if we have a fraction we're gonna reduce it all right so these are some pro tips and I think I'm earning some likes right so do me that favor and follow me to this next example so we're gonna go into so many different rules of probability and we're gonna look at all these techniques but the first thing is you have to make sure that when you're constructing these models that do we really have a probability model right because you need a way of checking does this make sense you know these things that I'm calculating and so here's a couple of notes when you're finding the, a probability of anything right so we have two conditions number one when you're finding the probability of anything of the probability of something happening is going to be between zero and one um, for you gentlemen watching this video just think back to maybe high school middle school you know what's the chance of you getting that girl's number well it's probably zero right no, I'm just kidding <laughs> so don't cry don't cry so zero would mean there is no chance that that's ever gonna happen it's impossible so that's what a probability of zero looks like right and the probability of one right that's like the probability of you smashing that like button right so it's gonna happen it's gonna happen it's guaranteed right so that is 100% right there so that's what our range is between those two numbers there okay so you have to make sure every single one of these probabilities that they give us fall between 0 and 1 the second thing is that when you add up every single one of these numbers right from our probability distribution right they better add up to 1 so when we add up all those probabilities I'm just going to use shorthand notation here right when we add up all those and that's what it means the summation right when we add up all these different probabilities when we add them all up we're going to get a total of one right and so uh, if those two conditions any one of those conditions is not met then this is not a probability model and some of you are probably already telling me but dr math these guys don't add up to one they actually add up to more than one and that's how you know that this is not right is it given a probability model well no and the reason being these when you add them all up do not equal one after you add them all up so hopefully that makes sense and follow me to our next example all right so let's go ahead and dive into this question relating to baseball so uh, you have a pitcher he's gonna throw 34 3430 pitches during part of his recent season all right of these uh, 1,367 were thrown with no strikes on the batter. So that's how many pitches were thrown with no strikes on the batter. 877 of them were thrown with one strike, and then 1,186 of them were thrown with two strikes. So let's look at our first question. What is the probability that a, a baseball pitch is thrown with no strikes? So again, when we look at this fraction, when we look at these fractions, the number on top is that specific number that we're looking at in this case we're looking at that pitch being thrown with no strikes and we see all right that the ones that were thrown with no strikes that was 1367 of those were right so that's 1367 and we're dividing it by the total number of pitches which is 3430 all right so we do a little calculation here all right, and we're going to round to uh, four decimal places, so we get 39.85 there. Let me clean up that five for you. 39.85. All right, part B. 
Part B is saying, what is the probability that a baseball pitch is thrown with fewer than two strikes? So fewer than two strikes, we're looking at no strikes or one strike. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, those that had no strikes, which were the 13, 67, and we're gonna add all of those pitches that were thrown with one strike. And they tell us that there was 877 of those. So we're gonna add those up and we're gonna divide that by the total, which is the 3,430 pitches. So we end up with 2,244 uh, over our total. And we're gonna again round to four decimal places, do a little number crunching here, and we get 0.6542. And there is your probability, folks, of uh, this pitcher throwing is it a pitcher yeah uh throwing uh, a strike with fewer than two strikes excuse me always read the question of throwing a pitch with fewer than two strikes all right you good so am i let's look at another example all right matthew so let's check out this problem and notice they're giving us a table here so let's use uh let's see how to use these tables uh, to answer these probability questions so you have a survey here and it's asking uh, people how much confidence they had in educational institutes. And here were the following uh, results here. All right, so let's get to the question. What is the probability that, the sampled, that a sampled person has either a great deal or some confidence in educational institutes? So a great deal or some confidence. So uh, because we're looking at two things here, we're looking at all these folks, let me highlight it for you, all these folks that have a great deal of confidence, and we're also looking at all these folks that have some confidence. So what we're gonna do is we need to add those two uh, numbers up. And then whatever we get when we add those two numbers up, we're gonna divide that by our total number of uh, people that were surveyed. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So we have uh, 10,059 and then we're going to add that 17,816. So let's go ahead and add that up and then we'll get our numerator. All right, and there we have it. And so now just go ahead and divide that. And remember, we're going to round to four decimal places. So again, when they give you a table, right? It's the same thing. Our number on top still represents that group that we're focused in on. All right, mathletes, last example coming at you. All right, so let's check it out. So we have a survey of four, a little over 46,000 women and they were asked how many children they had. All right, so here's all the results uh, of the survey. And for part A, it's asking, what is the probability that a sampled woman has two children? Notice it's just saying two children. So here we only have this group right here. So we see that 11,274 women had two children out of the total, right? So that one, I think we're okay on. The one that involves a little bit more work will be part B. So let me erase my highlighting here. Let's see if I can. Yeah, let's erase that highlighting. And let's look at question B. What is the probability that a sampled woman has fewer than two children? So that means that we're not including two children because it says fewer than. So let me highlight the group that we're interested in. So we're interested in this group that has uh, of women that had one child or this group of women that had no children. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding those two up. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna add the 12,585 and we're gonna add that to the 7,450. So let's go ahead and add that up and then we get 20,035. So that's gonna be our number, our numerator there. And we're gonna divide that by our total again. And again, when you do this, just make sure you round to those four 
decimal places. And there you have it, mathletes, right? This is our introduction to uh, probability. And what we're gonna see as we move forward, we're gonna see these ideas expand, get a little bit more complicated, but if you stay true to us, we're gonna make it that much easier for you. All right, mathletes, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.